Hey everyone, this is Greg Benz with another Photoshop tutorial. In this video, I'll show you how to clean up high ISO noise in a starry night scene like this using just a single exposure. I previously edited this same scene in another demo showing you how to stack nine images with Starry Landscape Stacker to clean up the sky. And while I believe that's the best result when possible, you can't always get multiple images. Even if you have enough time to shoot multiple exposures, you might have moving subjects such as shooting stars, the ribbons of the aurora, or clouds moving through the scene. And if those things are happening, you really can't stack multiple images, so it's important to have an alternative approach. And I'll show you how to do that here, starting with the raw processing in Lightroom. It's important not to over sharpen your image because that will bring out all sorts of noise. So this image was shot at ISO 6400, and we can see there is a lot of noise. And if we increase the sharpening, it really comes out dramatically. So we need a pretty low value. If we go all the way to zero, we lose a little bit of star detail. So I like something around 25, but between zero and 25 is probably an ideal amount of sharpening. You may want to turn up the masking, which helps bring down some of that background noise. I'd say anything from about 10 to 20, 30% is probably an ideal amount. And if you hold the option key, you can see where it's being applied. So you can see it's going in the background there and trying to just reduce the sharpening of that background detail. Fairly subtle here, but it can be helpful in preventing noise while you bring out star detail. Next is the luminance noise reduction. We can do the same thing and hold Alt and see this a little bit better in grayscale. You notice that as we push this up higher and higher, we start to really knock down the noise and end up with a weird pixelated look around the stars. If we zoom in even closer, you can really see how horrible these things look at a value like 85. At something around you know 60, we have a usable result, but it's still pixelated. So if I didn't have any options in Photoshop, this is what I'd do, but we do have much better options in Photoshop. So the right answer I think is to dial it back to down to something very small, like five or 10, just a little bit here, and we'll do the rest in Photoshop. Lastly is the color noise reduction. If it's set too low, you get all this horrible color noise in the background, which as you get up to higher values like ISO 10,000 will really start to be an issue. So you want to push that up and notice if we look around here, these stars have some color. This one's green, there's some blue here, a little bit of red to this star. If we push the color noise reduction up too high, then these stars start to lose their color. Only this one really has color. If we push it all the way up, it's eventually gone. So I would push the color noise reduction up as high as you can while still maintaining enough character of these stars. They should have a little bit of color. They're all different. So don't eliminate that color but you can push it up pretty high safely. And at this point, we'll jump over to Photoshop for the next steps. Once you've exported from Lightroom to Photoshop, we're ready to begin serious noise reduction. I personally use Nick Define, which is available under Filter, Nick Collection, Define 2. You can use whatever so software you want to reduce noise. It doesn't really matter. The steps that come after this will be the same regardless. You might use something like Topaz Denoise, though personally I prefer the results of define and the software is much easier to use. Now we can see looking at the before and after slider here, the noise reduction is very, very good at the default settings. The stars in general have retained almost all their detail, not completely, but almost, and the background noise has been knocked down significantly. We have a couple of options to try and improve this though. We could change the way that the noise is actually detected in the image by switching over to the manual method and specifying where to look for noise. Personally, I haven't seen any benefit to that approach and it just complicates things. So I would leave it at automatic for your starry night skies. However, on the reduce tab, we do have some options here that are important. Color noise, you can skip because we've already taken care of that in Lightroom. But the contrast noise is essentially the amount of noise reduction being applied. And we wanna turn it up as high as we can without causing problems. Now, if we go up to something obscenely high, like 170-ish, we start to see a bunch of artifacts like we did in Lightroom by going too high. So that's not gonna be good. It, things will fall apart pretty quickly if you go too high. But if you push back to something like 125 or so, I find that that's a very nice looking result and a little bit better than the default 100%. So you may wanna turn this up and then just click okay when you found the result you like. Now Define is gonna create a copy of the image and do the noise reduction on that copy. So we have two different layers. We have the original underneath with all the noise but the star detail, and on top we have the noise reduction, which unfortunately is going to diminish some of the star detail. So we just need to blend these together with a layer mask. If we look at the before and after, 
we can see that we've done a great job of reducing noise, but notice some of this minor star detail is going away. For example, a star like this really gets pushed down quite a bit. It's almost gone in the noise reduced version. And that's because a minor star, a dimmer star, looks a lot like noise to the algorithm. But we can fix that by using a mask that will be blacking out these areas of stars in the noise reduced version so that the original can shine through from beneath. Now we can look at a few different options. If you click on a lights mask using whatever software you want to use, such as my free masking panel, I'm using Lumenzia here, we can see that the lights mask do a great job of selecting the stars, but a lights one is also selecting a lot of the background sky. So we can look at lights two, and in this case, it does a really nice job in the dark parts of the sky. I can see these minor stars, lots and lots of detail throughout, and that looks great up above, but unfortunately for an image like this that has the aurora, the aurora also gets selected, meaning that we're gonna have a very hard time trying to pull out the best of the noise reduction and get the best of the original detail because we don't have that separation. So we could look at something like Lights 3, and it's done a better job down here, so we may wanna play with that and combine masks. But if we look up top, what we're gonna see is that these minor stars got knocked out, and that's not gonna work very well because the areas that we really need to bring back the detail are these minor stars. So if I was gonna use my free masking panel or some other channel-based option, I would use Lights 2. It's the best option out there and it's gonna be an improvement over what we have. If you're using Lumenzia, we can take things a bit further using this lighter, darker option. Now we want to actually use the inverse because we can select the stars by using the lighter function, but what we want is to make the stars black. So we're gonna invert the mask by clicking not and then clicking on lighter and we'll choose the um, pixels that are lighter based on a radius of five because these are very small objects, so a smaller radius will give a better, better result. Click OK and just give the software a second to render the preview. And now we can see a preview of this mask. So it's obviously the inverse of what we were looking at a second ago, and if we were gonna complete with lights too, we would have inverted the mask as well. But this is going to black out the stars so that the original will shine through from beneath. And notice as, as we approach the horizon, the aurora is also cleanly separated. So throughout the starry sky, it can clearly see the difference. And that's why we want to use the lighter version. It's going to give us a much better result. So we like what's going on here. We'll click mask and that will turn this preview into a mask. And so let's just take a look at what we've done here. So here was before with the noise reduction and then after we brought back more starry detail and we'll look around a few different areas of the sky here. Now notice the, uh, the top row of pixels looks a little funny. That's one thing I don't like about Define. For one pixel radius at the edges, it just doesn't reduce noise. I have no idea why, but if you use Nick Define, you're gonna wanna consider cropping your whole image by one pixel at the edges. It's just the way it is. It's not anything to do with our luminosity mask. It's just what Define does for whatever reason. But looking at the before and after, look how much more star detail comes out of these minor stars with this mask. It's much, much cleaner. And as we look down at the Aurora, we're preserving all of our noise reduction. There's no change here. So this is a really nice mask result. Now in inspecting the mask, notice that we also have some blacking out of the areas around the trees because those were lighter than those dark trees. So let's take a look and just see if there's any issues. We may want to fix that. And as I look at before and after, I don't have any problems with it. It looks fine to me. But if you did, you could simply open up the mask, select a white paintbrush, and just paint white on those areas to restore the noise reduced version if that was an issue. Don't need to do it here, but just want to make sure you're familiar with the options. And that's really it. We exported from RAW, we reduced the noise, and then we used the not lighter mask in Lumenzia to bring back the star detail. And let's take a look at a comparison of how these different methods stack up. So here is our original with all the noise in it. This is a version that I previously edited. And then we'd use Nick Define to clean up the stars. And then we added our mask to bring back more of that starry detail, especially in some of these more minor stars up above here. So it looks much better. And I can tell you that this is definitely better than the Lights 2 version I was able to pull out uh, and is a very, very good result. So if I have no option but to use a single image, this is very printable. I could certainly use this image. And if I had moving clouds 
or other moving details in the scene, then this is what I'd have to do. But if you can stack it, which I was able to for this image, you get a better result yet. Notice things like this black line here. It's just some sort of weird, nasty artifact that was put in this frame. And with a, the stacked version, that goes away. So the stacking is definitely a better result. And not only is that cleaner, but just look at some of the minor stars here. Here we have the best version we could create from a single image. And here we have the stacked version. And there are many more minor stars. And things like these little darker blemishes that are throughout the image, they're really not quite noise because it's not pixel level. It's bigger than that. That gets cleaned up. So there's no question that if you're able to stack multiple images, that is definitely the way to go. But if you can't, the approach I just showed you here to clean up a single ISO 6400 image is going to really give you a much higher quality result and allow you to work with just that single image. I hope you enjoyed that. If you'd like to see more tutorials like this, please click the subscribe button in YouTube and head over to gregbensphotography.com newsletter to sign up for my free newsletter where I send out tutorials like this on a regular basis.